wonderful. Kira McCown, this is a follow-up to a story yeah. that you talked about yesterday. That's right. oh, not yesterday, last week. Seems oh, like yesterday, Seems, doesn't I, it? I know, I know. So there we <laughs> go. Right. Kira, take it away. <laughs> yes, yeah, so I talked last week about um, the UFC uh, actually putting on a fight on Saturday in Jacksonville, Florida, in the arena there, even though, you know, we're in the midst of a pandemic and a shelter in place situation. So um, just an update on what's going on there and uh, a little bit of foul play, in my opinion. And also one of the reasons I find this story to be particularly important is because we're looking at what might become commonplace in all professional sports. I'm talking baseball, basketball, football, right? So UFC 249, it's an ESPN pay-per-view event in Jacksonville, Florida, took place with no fans in a 15,000 seat uh, Veterans Memorial Arena on Saturday with everybody outside the octagon sporting face masks and uh, fighters being able to actually hear the commentary uh, during the show, which it was funny listening to some of their thoughts on actually hearing the commentators make you know judgments on their fighting um in the news of the positive in the news of positive tests on friday of uh ronaldo jacari Souza and his cornermen coupled with videos of him canoodling and not socially distancing with other fighters was disturbing and caused a hiccup in public relations so basically one of their fighters uh Souza came on wednesday saying that he might have come in contact um, with people that had COVID. Um, testing results came out on Friday that showed that he, in fact, and his quarterman did test positive for the virus. And then um, actually a, a social media video came out showing him actually canoodling with a bunch of the other camps. So very, very dangerous. Um, Zachary Binney, who uh, is an adjunct instructor of epidemiology at Rollins School of Public Health uh, at Emory, tweeted Saturday that uh, Dana White, his, uh, the uh, uh, partial owner of UFC and CEO, um, and the UFC were negligent in restarting so soon, adding, if this was your system working as designed, your system is bogus. He went on to question the UFC on social distancing in part because it allowed Sauza to attend the weigh-in after he notified officials he had been exposed as early as Wednesday. So on Saturday, the full speed ahead determination extended the fighter's participation agreement, according to the New York Times, which reported that competitors could risk losing prize money or bonuses if they were to even suggest that proper safety precautions were not in place. So any sort of criticism about the fight on Saturday or about UFC in general would keep them from getting their prize money inside of their contracts. Um, a senior attorney, David Muriskin, um, at the Legal Advocacy Group of Public Justice, uh, said that the terms were really shocking. According to the news site, he noted that sections of the agreement may be legally unenforceable, but would still have a chilling effect on people's willingness to report risks. So some of the startling items in the agreements with fighters was basically that everyone involved at the event and their families can't hold the promotion liable if any of them suffer from COVID. The document also asked signees to waive all the rights on behalf of their spouse domestic partner, children, parents, grandparents, step-parents, and stepchildren. Uh, they're supposed to come in, oh, they're not supposed to come in contact with anyone four weeks after the event. Notably, it does not suggest the participant needs to self-quarantine post-event, although this, in part, this part of the contract would suggest that that's necessary. Um, the agreement specifically makes the signing participants solely liable for the cost of any and all medical treatment or disability and all harms, risks, and dangers and injuries associated with COVID-19. Uh, they must agree that all testing and regulations in order to fight or work at the event, um, they're making no uh, guarantee that everyone in attendance is, is to be tested. So they... In, if, even though we know that they're testing everybody, they put in the contract that there's no guarantee that everybody is going to be tested. That way they keep themselves safe from any other like legal issues in, in regards to testing or not testing. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, no, no safety there. Participant acknowledges and agrees that the company will not provide the participant with access to health or medical care. And it also makes sure that regardless of where the participant is from, that the event, uh, that where the event is held or where the event is held, pardon, 
Um, all uh, court hearings will take place at the UFC's home court in Las Vegas, Nevada. So there's a significant pressure to return to live sports. Um, uh, Ron DeSantis and Trump are eager to reopen the economy. And Trump is looking at his sports guys, including um, you know, the WWE as well as the UFC as being his Avengers and opening up the economy. And in my opinion, also getting people's minds off of what's actually going on and the shit show of the Trump administration. Um, just a back, uh, just a little reminder on the background, Trump and his friendship with Dana White spans over almost 20 years. Um, he was one of the few casino owners that would agree to stage UFC events back in the day. And White has, uh, su has supported Trump's run for presidency in the past. So um, UFC is rolling the dice, hosting events during a pande pandemic. If anything goes wrong for anyone involved um, or their families, though, the promotion will seemingly be protected and the public is less likely to find out due to the heavily punished non-disclosure agreements. So what do you guys is, think of this? This is really interesting. So I, this, I actually, uh, you know, because I watched Joe Rogan, I, he, of course, was uh, commentating at these fights and... Uh, the way he was describing it, they were kind of all like, oh, it's just like, you know, it's like, don't worry, just um, just uh, deal with your stuff. But I think that the, I'm really still at what you were talking about last Wednesday, that why all this is happening. Because we can go through the contract and all the stipulations for that they're making people jump through, all the quiet that they're trying to enforce. But this is happening because this was, ha this was set up before the uh, uh, quarantine happened. And it was a contract that they made that they don't want to lose money. A lot, like you said, a, a lot of people that are currently getting paid very big dividends in a big boardroom somewhere. Maybe it's a board conference room at this point somewhere because they probably are making sure they don't get infected themselves. Um, have decided, hey, look, we have a contract with ESPN or whatever it was that they have a contract with. And we're going to fulfill it. And we're going to do that. And then you have like interest uh, knocking into this. You have Trump who's trying to accomplish his make America open up again. And then he's like, good, this is a thing that fits that thing. Yeah. So, and then you have all the fighters, I'm sure. I'm sure a lot of them don't care that there's a pandemic and they're like, I just want to do my thing. This is what I'm here for. There's so a lot of money on the everyone, line. It's, it's one of those situations where it's not safe. It's all the things you said, Kira, but all the people involved generally are getting what they want. Um, I understand. Well, they, and, and they have lots of money and power, so yeah. That's, yeah. they're going to continue doing what they want. Yeah. So I think just for my final commentary on this, look, I understand that people want the distractions, the bread and circuses, and look, I, I understand wanting to reopen the country and getting things back to a normal, but that's not going to happen. And the parties that are involved, everyone understands the risks. And Look, I hate saying this, but there is a possibly and potential real risk of a second wave. Daniel, real quick, you should do the WHO mention real quick. Say it, say it, say it, say it. Oh, say yeah, it, say right, it. right, right. Okay, so guys, just so you know, the YouTube has decried that the WHO, the World Health Organization, knows everything and is omniscient, and anything that they say <laughs> is the law of how we should look at quarantine and mm -hmm. actions of it. Uh, when they said a number, the WHO said a number of months ago that it was non-communicable, they were right. When they said you didn't need to wear a face mask, they were right. When they said you do have to wear a face mask, they were also right. No contradiction. That's just the way it is. So if we say anything in this segment that doesn't agree with WHO, we are completely wrong. YouTube, please don't take down the video. So I think final note too. I think I, was, we're, I, we're I have a final word too, oh, kids. Okay, so okay. sorry. Go so, ahead. Though. So I understand that like there's a lot of concerns about reopening the country. I think everyone involved, knowing the risks will, you know, the, the risks will happen. The risk is there. I'm preparing for worst case scenario because again, we are not out of the woods yet with this pandemic. Here was the final word. Go ahead. Yeah, and the final words for me, honestly, like we, you know, we want to remember that a lot of this desperation to open up is coming out of contracts uh, with ESPN, with with you know hundreds of millions of dollars. And basically what's happening are these really wealthy CEOs and all these people that are desperate to open up and make sure that those contracts get through is they're taking advantage of these fighters. And we see this, this is just like a, a, a micro of the macro. You know, this is how corporations and companies largely will get by through this is taking advantage of their workers making sure there's no safety for them and there's no space for them to actually speak up while all the investors all of the ceos and everybody that's you know in that in that higher up 
uh, that, that higher echelon are reaping all of the benefits and not actually taking any of the risk.